scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Please, I want you to humble yourself as you listen tonight, whether you are married or not. No man outgrows the need for greater knowledge. At every level, there is still more that we can add to our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Five verse 31. Are you ready? One to read. And shall be joined. And they too shall be very sensitive words for this cause that's going to be our first discussion so the bible never said the man will just come and meet a woman because he wants to marry he said for this cause that means there is a revelation that sponsors this action and if you do not know what the cause is all about then you can never be effective in marriage everyone say for this cause what cause there was something he had been explaining down to chapter 30 that's the cause and on the strength of that revelation chapter 30 i mean verse 31 now says for this cause that means in light of what has been aforementioned whoever has understood the prior revelations alongside the implication of working in them is qualified to fulfill 31 are you getting my point now for this cause not it didn't say for a cause so you don't choose it for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to who his wife it says and they too notice he didn't say shall come to his wife he didn't say shall have children to his wife he uses a very strange word he says shall be joined to his wife and they too shall become not just one spirit but one flesh 32 this is Paul speaking he said this is what this is a great mystery I told you a mystery is a hidden truth the moment you see that something is a mystery in scripture it means you are going to have to depend on the Holy Ghost totally to give you the explanation it's not just left to experience are you getting my point the bible tells us marriage is a mystery that means in that revelation of marriage to be effective both physically husband and wife and spiritually your relationship with god it will take the illumination of the holy ghost and tonight we are going to exploit he said this is a great mystery but i speak concerning what Christ and that means marriage is a reflection of something greater than the home marriage is a reflection of something greater than the desire of a man to a woman who get married and decide to spend their lives together if we understand the mystery of marriage you will understand the mystery of spiritual power you will understand the mystery of fellowship and intimacy with God you will understand the mystery of authentic Christianity. 
failure to understand this will produce failure in every aspect of your life both in the home and in your spiritual life say amen but i speak concerning christ and the church hallelujah the first thing i want us to examine tonight the bible talks to us about a number of things when you read from ephesians especially chapter 4 and then you start up no really chapter 5 from verse 22 we're going to look down you read it down to 33 it explains a few things number one it tells us the concept of marriage what is the concept of marriage from the kingdom's perspective not just from africa's perspective not just from nigeria's perspective what is the concept of marriage like aaron shared here when he was up the stage he said it was not man's initiative at all number two I'll be talking about something that I feel is very sensitive and will bless us. Not only does God tell us about the concept of marriage, He reveals to us how a man can find this woman that becomes his bride. God did not leave us to guesswork and chance. Hallelujah. Number three. The Bible in this scripture reveals to us the partners and the persons involved in this union called marriage. Hallelujah. Because there are so many people who are uninvited guests and are now being initiated and invited to be part of this sacred union, this revelation of marriage. Tonight we are going to be exploring who are the parties and the persons involved who and who must be involved for a union to be called marriage whether spiritually or physically number what now number four and i think this is where i'm going to dwell in the roles the codes of conduct and the privileges that are associated with this mystery called marriage the roles of the various participants the privileges and the code of conduct the kingdom is a well organized structure and it has codes of conduct it doesn't leave us to guesswork you will be so blessed tonight and the lord is going to be taking away a lot of religion especially from many of us brothers i will be on your case tonight because you must be award-winning husbands in the name of the lord jesus christ some of you are smiling carry your notebook are you ready now the bible says for this cause let's explore what that cause is what is the cause really what is it because if you do not understand that cause the bible never said you know we don't talk please go back to, to verse 31 we never talk about the cause we just say therefore shall a man that that's not accurate hallelujah the the issue of a man leaving his father and mother is on the strength of his understanding this cause everybody say for this cause, for this cause. brothers shout for this cause. for this cause what does that mean for this cause it means because of the above reason or being aware of the previous statements and being prepared to abide by the conditions understanding the full implication of ignoring them that means if you say i am ready to leave my father and my mother you must have understood thoroughly what paul had to teach about a man or a husband a wife their roles the participants involved on the strength of that you say lord for this cause i have understood it and the implication and i'm ready to take a step how many people who walk up and down dreaming day and night of marriage 
and they do not understand the cause for this reason on the strength of this revelation number one the concept of marriage the bible clearly shows us that marriage is the union between a man and a woman a man and a woman please write it you must write man and woman write it the bible clearly tells us please let's settle some confusion once and for all the bible tells us marriage is the union between what who and who not a man and an animal not two men in love with one another not two ladies fantasizing about one another a man and a woman the second revelation about the concept of marriage is that that union must happen in the presence of their parents or the representatives he said therefore a man in that whole picture we see that there is man there is woman there is father there is mother no back door right we are exploring the ideologies of the kingdom so it matters that in marriage there must be the witnessing by either father or mother or in an event where they are absent representatives that are delegated to stand in their stead listen in scripture the role of the parents is even higher than the role of the priest that joins a marriage are you getting what i'm saying now very important the bible recognizes in fact when you read all through scripture the blessings that come from father and mother to their children is part of what solidifies the union not even necessarily the blessings of priests are you following me tonight so the union between who father okay husband or man and woman really in the presence of father and mother meaning that the father and mother in the ideal sense are the ones who are supposed to train and raise the children to understand that cause the bible says for this cause so according to god's pattern the father and the mother should be involved in raising the children to maturity and they release them now being satisfied like a lecturer that releases a student to be awarded a degree program and the student stands to defend himself before he is released and on the strength of the lecturer's satisfaction a recommendation is given we call it a degree and he says you can go and get a job anywhere are you getting my point now that means when the man and the woman fails who is to blame are you getting this now according to god's structure when a, a marriage fails in an ideal sense the parents are to be held responsible because forget about what has happened in our society i'm telling you god's original pattern now are you getting my point now don't feel bad don't hate your parents no that's why God is correcting it. Parents do not just have the responsibility to build children. No, they are supposed to train and build them. Are you learning something tonight? Any marriage that is done without the witness of a parental presence is not recognized by heaven. Let me tell you straight to the point. Please don't confuse what the westernization and the rest has brought. God's accurate pattern of marriage this is why when you are giving a woman in marriage they say who gives this woman she didn't just come from the jungle into the church in other words who trained her who certified her to be qualified to be a woman and a prospective mother hallelujah The parents are the ones who must prepare the woman they take the lady from being a girl to being a woman they transit the man from being a boy naive void of knowledge 
to a place of responsibility hallelujah now notice another revelation again is that marriage is between a man and a woman everybody say man woman although they are children they are not toddlers are you getting my point that tells you that the adumbration of marriage and womb and and marriage is not a new birth concept is deeper than new birth because as newborn babies we are fed on the milk of the world but marriage is an affair of people who have sustained maturity please are you are you getting this paul calls it a great mystery The Bible says, an heir as long as is a child, different not from a slave. Though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed. Marriage is the clearest revelation to man. That's the church. About God's intention as far as intimacy is concerned. Intimacy and oneness marriage is a technology that brings two people into oneness oneness in the flesh physical oneness recognized by heaven brothers and sisters this is the concept of marriage from god's standpoint it may sound very simple but you see the danger is when you ignore the principles of the kingdom there are severe consequences it's not that god punishes you the structure has been designed that way hallelujah another revelation about the concept of marriage please project that very verse is so rich and there is a lot to learn Who leaves his father and mother, ladies and gentlemen? One more time. Men say it. Who leaves his father and mother? What is the revelation of leaving your father and mother? It's not rebellion. It's called responsibility. Are you getting me? Leaving your father and mother is a spiritual communication that you have attained a state of responsibility where you can now build a niche for yourself and continue did you know in scriptures men were called and traced to their fathers Saul the son of Kish are you getting my point now so a man must leave his father and mother what that means is that you must relinquish dependence on them financially spiritually you must be able to stand you must have gained structure enough to now lead another generation another family this this on its own is a revelation we can spend the whole night talking about all the brothers say responsibility write it and underline it i'll be dealing with it in the course of this teaching responsibility that means listen that means that there are certain maybe by next week i'll be i'll teach on the gospel of salvation versus the gospel of the kingdom the gospel of salvation is the gospel that saves men that's the gospel that reveals the substitutionary work of jesus and his work of grace and mercy in the gospel of salvation man does not do anything all he does is to receive by faith the free gift that christ gave as a substitute but in the gospel of the kingdom it translates you to take advantage of that grace and begin to function in responsibility as an ambassador with the king so in in that one you now do the work on the strength of what christ has done i hope that we'll have time and we'll talk about that listen the gospel of salvation is only one tenth of god's universal agenda although listen it is very important 
because that's the gospel that brings you into the kingdom but to just dwell on the gospel of salvation that's where you talk about the grace of god everything has been done he died for you you received his life now you are joined heir with christ that's the gospel of salvation but when you transit to spiritual maturity there is a shift from christ being savior to christ being king at that point you are initiated into the gospel of the kingdom and in the gospel of the kingdom you now begin to understand on the strength of your intimacy with christ that god has an agenda and that he seeks envoys through which he can carry this agenda with and there are conditions hallelujah marriage is a very powerful mystery that reflects christ and the church the second thing i want us to look at very quickly the bible does not leave us in the dark as to how a man should find the woman that becomes his bride if god instituted marriage are you getting my point now that means there should be a structured system through which a man should be able to meet his bride is that correct the same way christ adumbrated it christ left his father to prove are you getting my point now to prove that he had satisfied the condition and then he came and through a technology he looked for his bride the church sons of solomon let's look at something there for many of you that will be the first time you are reading it sons of solomon is after ecclesiastes sons of solomon chapter 3 sons of solomon is such a sensitive book just read the only part i ask you to read i'm not ready for trouble this night praise god if i say verse 6 read only verse 6 if i say verse 2 <laughs> praise the lord hallelujah songs of solomon chapter 3 from verse 1 to 4 very interesting scripture brothers open your eyes god is about to answer your prayer right now wake up your destiny is about to change this is this is not just a story about romance I told you the mysteries of the kingdom have the operation of the kingdom hidden in stories and parables you can look at the romance and be ecstatic about it but when the holy ghost guides you you can draw forth the spiritual principle and this is what we want to look at by night on my bed i sought him this is a woman this is the contemplation of the bride ladies listen this is a woman's heart now solomon solomon how he entered the heart of a woman to draw forth her contemplations by night are you getting my point now by night on my bed this is the church the bride of christ i sought him who my what soul loves this is very important sensitive words are beginning to come into the equation now he said notice he didn't say who my eyes delights in who my your soul has already loved the person and you have not seen him this is the spiritual technology behind love that is genuine not lost she has not seen the husband but planted in her is the ability to love him and it's from the soul realm that means it's not tied to money it's not tied to what you have seen this is a woman thinking on her bed how did her soul start loving someone she had not seen? Are you getting my point now? All through from the Garden of Eden, through the law and the prophet, man began to seek for one whom his soul loves. Are you getting my point? To seek for a way and a kingdom and a system. And they began to do all kinds of rituals. It was this contemplation. Why was it by night? Because that was the season of man's fall. Are you getting my point now? In need of redemption. The night time talks about the time of darkness. Talks about the absence of knowledge and salvation. He said, I sought him, but I what? 
sister you will never marry until you are ready to love are you getting my point so the equation about their meeting together does not even start with the man it starts with the woman please are you following me i show you a mystery the woman is busy thinking in her heart verse 2 i will rise everybody say i will rise say action say cooperation the woman would have died there on her bed she said look this passion this is genuine love oh look let me tell you something brothers and sisters in as much as we avoid emotional ecstasy i'm going to be addressing things that will bless you when when the love of god as far as marriage is concerned is upon you listen that love becomes a priority this lady was contemplating for so long she could not lie down and sleep there she said look i will arise and go about in the street have you seen love drive a brother before rain does not matter sun does not matter listen if you don't have that kind of love your marriage cannot work that is the the kind of love that gives excuses that's the kind of love that gives excuses for everyone's wrongdoing there are many people getting into marriage whose level of love is not passionate enough to get them to that realm please listen because god is answering someone's prayer now there is no managing in marriage it's better to fail in life and make it in marriage the bible uses marriage as a yardstick to show whether a bishop is a good bishop or not not praying in tongues a bishop must be a husband of one wife able to keep his family marriage is that serious i will arise and go about to the city ah, yeah. he said and in the broadway i will seek him again whom my that means there is an imprint in her heart she's just looking for the face that will match that imprint are you getting my point ladies how many of you get into relationship purely because of what your eyes see genuine love starts from your spirit man genuine love starts way before any man appears it's not that you see somebody tall dark and handsome all of a sudden you cannot sleep there is a character and a nature of love that is welled up in you are you getting my point please i sought him but i found him not verse 3 let's hurry up the watchman ah yeah this is a powerful revelation in a bid to look for someone please lady sister anybody thank you watch this this lady is looking for the person her soul loves now in a bid to search there are certain people she met on the way called watchmen are you getting my point now this watchman the watchman that go about the city found me to whom i said saw ye him that my soul loveth that means in a bid to communicate this desire she met an evangelist she met a man of god she came for a meeting these watchmen have the ability to channel her to the true love please is someone following and the bible says verse 4 it was it was but a little that i passed from them but i found him whom my soul loved after she met and encountered this watchman after a season many things happened during her encounter with the watchman and she found this one that her soul loved and she said i held him and will not let him go she had found the love of her life indeed no confusion it says until i had brought him to whose house the woman that trained me the woman that qualified me to get into marriage to my mother's house 
and into the chamber of her that conceived me. This is not romance at all. This is a very deep spiritual communication. So the process starts with God who is able to put that desire. Are you getting my point now? If that desire is not planted in you, sister, you may never truly get married. Please believe what I'm saying. It's not just the issue of no man wants to ask me out. It started with God putting a desire. When God puts that desire, all these two years of posting men and say I'm thinking about it, is either he's not the one or he's the one. As simple as that. When she found the person her heart truly loved, she knew it. Hallelujah. Thank you. Now, I want you to see the level of passion. I loved him. I held him. Are you getting my point now? Look, that, that level of love cannot happen in a human sense. It takes the spirit of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Do you see that many of the things we call love in marriage and relationship truly is not that God kind of love? I'm not just talking of agape. That love that God plans a man for his wife and a wife for that man. Let me tell you, I want to give you a litmus test very clear. Lady, if the guy you are thinking of saying yes to, if you are not passionate about him in love pack your load and leave quickly before you say yes that love is the ingredient that will sustain that relationship through the thick and thin please are you getting what i'm saying it's not enough to love a woman or love a man you must have passion the bible describes it as fire not lost because you saw a nice lady figure eight not lost remember that this love we are talking about started before she even looked at him that was why the day you gave your life to christ you knew it you knew you had found something i wouldn't trade you for silver or gold i wouldn't trade you for riches untold you are you are my everything lost usually thrives just on the senses are you getting my point now when you see a lady looking hot looking fine you are not even sure of what you have now whether it's lost or is it a physique that attracted you so many brothers just see a lady looking nice and hot and they say i love this girl in two minutes you see a perfect stranger they call it love as first sight nonsense spiritual things don't work like that that's destruction at first sight a man who meets a lady listen remember we're still discussing for this course you just see a perfect stranger you've never seen her you just come what's your name taiwan say taiwan i'm in love hold on listen listen in as much as you see the person and connect with the person to just look and say i am asking you out give me an answer now we are going to spend the rest of our lives together are you stupid do you know the implication of staying with one person one use five years to finish to finish your degree you you almost killed the whole school before you graduated now you want to spend the rest of your god-given life to get all together to wake up and see the same person at the side of your bed is a great mystery god must help you it's not given to man i'm telling you you will be tired if this love does not come from the spirit i don't care what you saw it will fade like a leaf that's why a brother can see a lady right now oh you saw a lady at a dinner Aaron, ah, my blood is hot. What is wrong? Oh God, give me this person. Two weeks later, she removed her with one. 
and you just pass her as if you didn't see her. Aaron says, make progress. Say, make progress. I'm pressing into God now. That's the excuse people use. I'm, I'm pressing. I, I need, please, don't distract me. I need to press into God. The same guy that is pressing into God one week later is seeing another person again. The retreat is over by force. hallelujah listen let me tell you something sisters if you are really a spiritual lady you will understand when seasons a brother should not really come and just of course there are principles of friendship building intimacy but i'm telling you a brother shouldn't just come and take you unawares where did you keep your spirit there there are there are seasons Hallelujah. You are prepared from your prayer life and the dealings of God in that season. You begin to sense that Kai, based on the dealings of the spirit, I'm already beginning to sense a release. So you go to pray and all of a sudden Aaron flashes your mind and you're like, Jesus, I bind it. What is going on here? I have found whom my soul loves. Please let me talk for a few minutes about this love thing. If you are not passionate, sister, how many of you have seen how many of you have seen a lady who a guy calls by 11 o'clock and she's quarreling him. I'm tired. Why will you call me at this time and say I'm sorry? I'm sorry I you know what all this loyalty that guys do when they are waiting for years and the lady is now raking please i'm tired I, I i i will talk to you later on as tired as she is another brother calls 10 minutes later before it finishes hello how are you i mean her her expression cannot even be hidden her heart suddenly jumps to her face and her voice and the, guys know, the guy knows that she has been missing and waiting for that call. Network calls. You quarrel because of credit. Now you are calling by yourself. Say, no, no, no problem. You have, you have been trying. Truly, let me tell you. Listen. When you get married to the person your heart truly does not love, you have signed a record of unfaithfulness forever. You will struggle. I don't care whether you are anointed with fire on your head believe what i'm telling you that's why when you marry because of money you saw the guy and he told you that uh, i just came back from dubai i have some buildings around i have a lot of this and your heart just melts your mother says let's pray say mommy please have, you have been taking decision for me all the days of my life this one i'm stamping my feet i must marry him because you want the money and then the money does not go again i the money disappears and you find out that your heart is not stayed to love him again everybody say passion everybody say love when you marry the person you genuinely love you can sit together and drink gary even if you stay in a touched house and you find fulfillment and satisfaction when you marry somebody you don't love you give excuses over everything if you already married there's nothing you can do about it just trust god to paint the cross for you to the color you want but that cross you must carry it is someone getting blessed I'm not necessarily speaking in a marriage and a relationship talk i'm just trying to show you how marriage relates because in a standard marriage is in there are things we are going to talk about issues of divorce issues of all of these kinds of things another thing we see is that there was a seeking everybody says seeking both on the part of the man the part of the lady is not really seeking as it were 
is positioning. Write it. You position yourself to be found. And the man seeks. There are all kinds of arrogant men who are too proud to seek. You will remain unmarried. I tell you the truth. Jesus said, I came to seek and save this my bride called the lost. I came to seek. He told the prophet, go and look for a prostitute. Go around, seek. You will find this prostitute called Goma. Marry her as an adumbration of my desire to be reconciled to this my bride. Ladies, tell the men, seek. Shout it. Say, I'm a hot cake. Ladies, like me all around. Seek, my brother. Open your eyes before they fool you with good looks. Seek by the Spirit. You don't seek blindly. How do you seek? You shall seek me and find me. When you go for retreats, that's seeking. When you read a good book, you are positioning yourself to seek well. Shout seek. There are many brothers yelling at the gates of heaven. Day and night. Oh God. Oh God. This and that. Get up and seek. And sister, position yourself. It's not enough to say, why wouldn't this brother look at me? See, it's a spiritual atmosphere. When you are not ready for relationship, it's like a magnet. It pushes people away. To be ready doesn't mean I like a man for this cause. Have you positioned yourself? We have to run. The Bible reveals three ways that connections are made for marriage and relationship. Number one is desire and passion. Desire. Genuine godly desire and passion please everything i'm saying here is tied to the kingdom not everyone is going to see a vision about his wife and it doesn't mean you are not spiritual say amen now look up not everybody is going to see a vision you were just standing and all of a sudden you saw this welfare lady cooking and god says arise arise why sitest thou here go and take your position he said nay lord but i am weak and god will say no 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 you are not weak if that's what you are waiting for you may be disappointed god can plant a genuine passion listen please you are a worker in the house right faithful worker I'm not talking of careless you are not contributing anything to the kingdom of God and you want to reap every harvest that others are working for. You, you, must, you must genuinely participate in kingdom building. Ah, one day suddenly you find out genuine desire. Please remove loss from it. You see that, ah, you notice that there is an unusual desire and passion for patience. Come patience. Unusual desire. Now watch this. When this happens, brothers, it's too early. Many of you don't have self-control. Once, once you feel anything, you land it till the lady lands it back at you. Be, be temperate. Don't just say, let me ask first though, before another person will come and ask. You don't know whether she's in a relationship. You don't know whether what, you just go and disgrace yourself. The Lord told me you are the one. She said, sorry, we are getting married next week. And you carry, you, you, you now feel stupid. You feel irresponsible. A word spoken in due season. Ladies, shout due season. There is a due season, my brother. So God can use a simple, godly desire. I've seen this lady. I, I, I connect with her in the spirit. And over time, as you build friendship, please bless you. Many brothers don't even understand the concept of friendship. They just come and say, stranger, you are my wife, I will marry you. Go and pray about it. I will hear tomorrow. What sort of nonsense is that? It's very rude. 
it may not it has worked for others but i'm telling you it's very rude you don't walk up to a lady and just say you are my wife pray about it that's bullying especially if you're a man of god or you're a great person don't use position to intimidate ladies is someone learning something tonight desire and passion there are many of us that you find yourself having a godly genuine desire for someone and some of us are very embarrassed suddenly you're embarrassed that somebody you're always praying with ah uh -uh. kai why am i and now you go to pray you find yourself looking at ushers you are trying trying ah and see there are brothers that come here by three o'clock and still sit outside everybody say passion because the person they are waiting for has not come and they say look let me pay that price what is it if this is a cross i must carry i must carry that passion is very good because the day the lady breaks her hand huh or the day they carry out a surgery on her that passion will sustain your love there are many ladies the day something happens to the guy they just turn around as if it's not the one they like he has not asked them out oh. they are so not proud of him something as little as running in a football field and he takes last the lady just turned Cry! brother has fallen my hands it's too early what sort of what what is your concept of marriage the brother has malaria and he vomits and everybody is looking and you you just start nauseating you are not you are you are feeling so discomforted you are not ready for marriage as simple as that is someone listening to me i'm hurrying up because i want to talk on roles and codes of conduct so a passion number two the prophetic god has also positioned the prophetic to help the man in locating the woman the prophetic there means either prophecy or the ministry of the holy spirit in your life and please i must balance this because that's what brought the issue of vision i saw a vision i saw a dream i saw this hallelujah hold on let me use the opportunity and balance something right now look up everybody god has not ordained you as a spiritual matchmaker moving around and looking at people and say aaron the lady you are sitting behind whether you see a vision or you have a dream about yourself or somebody else it must be handled with utmost maturity because marriage is a great mystery are you getting my point now you can go and meet an innocent lady and tell her do you know that i saw my man looking at you and all of a sudden it becomes an artificial desire especially if it falls at a point in her life where she's vulnerable ladies you know what i'm talking about right and then at that point all of a sudden this lady now begins to tie herself and maybe let's assume my man is even minding his business with another lady is someone getting what i'm saying please be careful when it has to do with giving people prophecy don't stand with utmost authority and look and say i have seen it if it does not happen god didn't call me and the lady is waiting then she sees the guy's invitation card La, what's the name Aaron. le pose and the lady is now wondering oh god what is going on this is my husband here leaving me oh lord and people engage in all kinds of skills and spiritual activity in a bit to recover back the kingdom does not leave us to confusion don't you on another hand neglect the place of the prophetic there are so many people i've seen in my dreams and visions way before in fact when i saw it they did not even know themselves even me when i saw it i was surprised and by the hand of god god came and connected them you know why i'm saying this when it comes to marriage even prophecy can change so when you tie people you now look and say kasham stand up 
is a tall guy. One day he will sit down two seats close to you. Write it down. His name is Adriel. If you miss him, you have missed your husband. Five years, Kasham is still going around. Hoping, Adriel, where are you? Adriel is planning his wedding. Are you getting my point? Aaron now comes and says, uh-uh, it's Adriel. They told me Adriel. Fair guy. Adriel. Any dark guy that comes, uh-uh. I don't want. The guy is fair. Kasham will sit forever. No husband. Because somebody injected a wrong prophecy into her. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are many of us who may be sitting down right now, the way we are. Wrong prophecies. Wrong prophecies. Please be careful. It must be discerned and balanced carefully. Listen to me. Listen. It was God himself that appointed Saul to be king. Is that true? It was the same God that now rejected Saul as king. True or false? It was God that appointed Moses to take God's people to the land flowing with milk and honey. Did God tell him he would not get there? Later on, it was the same God that stopped him. So be careful. That you saw a lady in a vision is no guarantee that you must marry her. There are many factors that must come together. Alignment. Are you getting my point? There is alignment. There is what? parental approval and all of these other factors for others maybe tribal differences or whatever it is there are factors together so it doesn't just make it work automatically please get this revelation if you don't get it you are going to fool yourself into error however under a guided atmosphere of the word and spiritual maturity prophecy can be very powerful hallelujah prophecy can be powerful in helping you understand your spouse. Number three, please play Mike. Divine connection, just like that. No vision, no nothing. Divine connection. For instance, we now give, come for me. MD just gives them a song to score together. He's doing his work as MD, but the spirit of God, come on now. The spirit of God. Vitoy worship team Riazal. I'm not much making. I'm just giving an example. Hallelujah. And in the course of the Riazal, they have a course to discuss about life. And they find out that there is a connection in ideologies. All of a sudden, Femi supernaturally starts having credit. Favor. That's God cooperating with the event to happen. Somebody just sent one five, whereas they wouldn't have sent one five. Every time you pray towards that relationship, Taiwo now wants to go and eat by two, but she's delayed to go by four. The only seat left is the seat where Femi is sitting. Everybody say divine connection. Oh, it happens. Absolutely. It happens. They've been inviting you for Koinonia for how many years? suddenly 2014 god just brings you they say turn around and hug one another and goodness could destiny it happens say it happens your wife is an usher now say amen very happy sitting down smiling and See the wife blushing. Are you getting the point now? Let me tell you something. In the house of God, your wife is there. In the house of God, sister, your husband is there. The Bible says, He that lives by the altar should eat by the altar. I'll say it. I'll say it. By the end of today, we'll turn around and greet one another. You'll just greet one another and say, Oh God, open my eyes. With this corporate anointing, open my eyes. The Bible says he broke bread and their eyes were opened. Alas, the sister you have been seeing every day. The Lord tells you, son of man, the season has come. 
Aaron was moving around and he went to prayer band while the sister was praying God was saying just serve just serve Ruth you will soon go to Naomi's vineyard and serve do you know many of you because of your marriage God took you from you got to order and something they didn't give you admission there God relocated you and brought you in a season everybody say divine connection that's how we meet destiny help us that's how many of you gave your life to Christ you were strolling around and you had a preacher preaching you just said let me enter and listen to the message divine connection and you met destiny that's how some of you came to koinonia it's one of the principles in fact let me tell you the truth it's one of the strongest ways that couples are connected together serving in the house of god so as you pray you say lord connect me divinely oh my god watch again so the parties involved in a true kingdom marriage there are three parties involved everybody say three parties number one is the man number two is the woman who would become his wife number three is jesus himself represented in the person of the holy spirit in a kingdom marriage you do not have two people alone please understand this that means in a kingdom marriage even the man is not the final authority he submits to a government higher than him this is the only way the values of the kingdom can be initiated and sustained there are men that believe they are the alpha and omega and they look at a lady and say didn't i pay your dowry i will beat you in this room and will lock the door here when you know there is a third witness who can also deal with you now the man slaps her two weeks later his hand and his leg cannot move again and it's the same woman who will carry him to the hospital do you know the bible said that on account of your faithfulness to your wife or not you can stop your prayers from being answered there are many people sweating in the bush whereas the answer to their prayer is just diligence in in honor of the wife please brothers understand that in a kingdom marriage you are not the final authority although you are the head physically but compared to christ you are also the bride are you following me now number three if we just dwell here it's all right the roles the roles now 5 verse 22 please open your eyes 5 verse 22 we'll start reading downward god is about to distribute roles to the parties involved he's about to give codes of conduct ladies can you read this one two read the first three words please first three words are you ready one two read submit what your money your withon your ability to cook it says submit what see to understand the gravity of this revelation it says offer your body as a living sacrifice it's the same word he's using here for the woman submit everything about you ladies need to hear this message all this women alive movement that is going rebellion against men we are the freedom fighters fighting for our right it must happen our way the bible says wives submit what are you seeing why you don't have a choice about submission your choice is the kind of head you submit to so you must you must trust god for a head that is worth your total submission wives submit yourself to your own husband the same way you submit yourself unto the lord that's a dangerous statement i saw some people lying on the ground some of you were rolling on the floor some of you were lying down on the ground as a sign of submission and surrender the bible says in that same way if you are going to be a faithful wife 
man this statement is so ego stinging you need the grace of god are you seeing why it's a great mystery wives submit yourselves unto your husband in the same capacity you come to koinonia and you're worshiping and you don't care whether your wivon falls or not you are just giving him all the praise and he's saying that same passion transfer it to your husband are you saying that marriage is not a child's play 23 for the husband it gives you the reason why you should submit hallelujah let me tell you very quickly submit to your own husbands the same way why is the reason for submission or what is the reason for submission he said for the husband is what reason number one ladies you are not equal in the home you are equal in christ you are equal in creation based on the grace and the blessings of god you are equal but when it comes to marriage the same way you and jesus christ you are one with christ in that marriage but when it comes to your roles in the kingdom when the gospel of the kingdom is is taught are you getting my point now you understand that like a faithful bride you must submit to your husband in all things are you getting my point so although you are equal you are not equal because you qualified you are equal because he married you he brought you into that oneness so give him that honor And then the Bible says something interesting again. He said, and he is the savior of the body. This is a dangerous statement. The man, what does it mean being a savior? It means <laughs> he's the one who paid the price to make the marriage work. He paid the dowry. Although I hear that in Nigeria, there are some places where it's the women that do all kinds of things. I don't know what they believe in, honestly. But I'm teaching you the kingdom. In other words, give the man that honor. For going to look for clothes and put him in three Ghana, three what? Aaron. And buying one cow and dragging it to your mother's house. The Bible says, submit to him in honor. Don't trivialize what he has done. Are you getting my point? On account of that price he paid, he traveled with you to the village to go and see all your relatives. They insulted him he said yes sir they said lie down he laid down he did all kinds of things paid all kinds of transport fare for people he said because he has paid this price just like christ paid the price to ransom us he said he paid that dowry that made you a wife so don't trivialize it without dowry without that price there is no marriage the man paid the dowry and he said in response to that submit the place is quiet right now ah, yeah. we are still on oh. ladies say in the name of Jesus <laughs> you don't want to say it say it oh. in the name of Jesus I receive grace to be submissive Many of you have very bad attitude towards men generally. Not to talk of the man who is your husband. You can shout at anybody. You can give it to anybody and don't care. Say me. They know I'm fire. Don't try me. I will give it to you. May God deliver you. Because this is not a mindset of the kingdom. Write it quickly in your prayer request during miracle service. Transformation. Transformation. 25. Guys, are you ready? Say yes. All right, let's read. One, two, read. Ah, this is not you. Shout it with the same voice. One, two, read. Stop. Husbands, do what? It is a think about loving her. Husbands, love your wife. If the Bible stopped there, there would have been a big confusion because any man would have created his reference for love are you getting me 
so you can say i sent you 200 naira the charge card ha -ha. what sort of nonsense is this didn't i try the bible said uh-uh i did not leave you to guess your concept of love he said even as what christ loved the church behold i show you a mystery husbands there is a standard that has been created everybody say a standard say it a standard whether you are Igbo, whether you are yoruba whether you are hausa whether you are from wherever there is a standard an uncompromising non-negotiable kingdom standard for every man to love his wife ladies that's good news you should clap and thank god for it because he didn't leave some of these cruel men to their personal opinion there are men see you see people around and and you look there's no love in them and then it so happens that most of these men marry very good wives very good godly wives and the man comes he cannot love her he cannot do anything her job in the house is just to keep producing babies sexual intimacy is not necessarily love that's why a man can sleep with a prostitute and pay her and pass her on the street and not even know husbands love your wives as christ loved the church how did christ love the church because god knew that many men would still argue it and complain so he added to let you know how did christ love the church let's read on brothers one to read he gave he gave he gave himself you know what it means to give yourself so it's not only the woman the woman is submitting herself in everything and the bible says the man has to give himself what does it mean to give himself it means sacrifice it means passion it means build her and make her glorious spiritually socially physically financially constrain yourself no matter what it takes to prove your love for your wife next verse please 26 let's hurry up okay 27 or 27 28 i just want to jump that he might present that bride so as a man if you are truly loving your wife you should be able to present her as a bride that glorious church without having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that you should be holy without blemish these are exact standards god is giving a man that there is a kingdom perspective for, of love that should be channeled to the woman she should see passion from you to her she should see the sacrifice you are making financially spiritually physically if that is not done brothers and sisters you are not loving your wife so you should only think of marriage when you are aware and prepared to play your role christ the bible says philippians 2 verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus that although he knew he was god he taught it not to be equality for the love that he had are you getting my point for his bride the church he came down to become a man went through every price through the beating of gethsemane through the nailing of the cross the degradation and everything he did it as a demonstration of his love so when you tell a lady i love you she looks at your life to see the sacrifice i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy please i'm i'm, I'm busy i can't talk to you let me tell you you always have time for what you love always sisters when a guy starts doing unnecessary and busy is a sign to sit down and talk thank you jesus 
as simple as these things are they will produce award-winning homes if you abide by them summarizing what is the role of the wife to love with such passion and to submit in everything the bible says that submit in everything 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 i think that's verse 29 is that 29 yes i think so uh okay no I can, one of the scriptures anyway i cannot find exactly where it is but it says submit in everything let it say everything now that's a very dangerous statement submit your body submit your finances finance has caused big trouble my mother was just me of of a wedding that happened in just in 24 hours the wedding scattered as they went to the hotel room they didn't even give thanks the lady just said the money that was collected he said most of the people came because of me i, I hardly saw your people there so the money that was raised please for peace to reign just channel it to me and the guy said you will know i paid your dowry that was it case closed she packed her things like she was joking and left submitting everything there are women that password their phones from their husbands this this section is passworded and they call the name of the rich man rachel um, or mary hello mary how are you and they run away oh god why are you calling me by this time the bible says that is called unfaithfulness some of you are already starting it in your relationship somebody else will, give my phone please huh must you check everything when there is transparency and truth are you getting my point now the bible says he who walks in the light will not stumble especially this our generation we have a lot of hidden skeletons so many things a lady is in a relationship the guy is there dreaming hoping to marry her whereas there are five or six different people one gives money in january the other one gives money in february the other one gives money in march by april the first one can repeat the cycle repeats again don't laugh because as as we are seated here i know this is the house of god there are people right now in this situation you want to be a faithful bride hallelujah your commitment submit in everything submit in everything if it's your husband is your husband you don't need to know how much is in my account the bible says submit in everything your body everything i had a story of a woman who doesn't allow her husband to meet with her until he pays her yeah said he's a stingy man so i know exactly how to get money from him you may be justified they may clap for you but you are violating the ordinance of marriage in the kingdom and don't you think god will spare you because the man is irresponsible remember there is a third witness in that marriage that's why i told you it's not just two people alone there is a third witness husband as you slap your wife there is a third witness woman as you cheat on your husband there is a third witness let me start from relationship as we play games with one another in relationship some of you ladies in the hostel you call the guy and you put the phone on loudspeaker and he's just communicating his love and you are laughing the remaining people laughing they are just laughing and say really i love you to the guy say i love you and you're just laughing at him there is a third witness there is a third witness there is a third witness the guy is there planning and praying putting on his facebook so 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 is my wife and you're now laughing from day one you never plan to get married to him see i will suck this guy dry like this thing that is stingy hand i must open it 
you are already you have done introduction the person does not know let me tell you it's not fair it's called halotry it's a great mystery faithfulness is very important it's a different thing if the relationship does not work but that you are willingly consciously unfaithful it doesn't work that way many of us say gather them plenty just gather the bible says, in the morning sow your seed in the evening sow your seed you don't know which one you will reap from continue when all the seeds grow I don't know which one you will kill. I lift my hands in worship as I sing glory to your name. Listen, the Bible says submit in everything. Submit your mindset. Lady say submit your mindset. I must deal with the issue of mindset if the, if i cannot finish this topic today listen listen brothers and sisters i don't care whether you saw a star falling and hit a sister and fell on you too to prove that's your wife if your mindset do not agree your marriage will not work can two work together amos three verse three the man will not bend his mindset to meet you just like Christ will not submit his mindset to your Igbo culture or your Yoruba culture or Hausa culture or Plateau culture or Benway culture or Kogi culture. You will have to submit. We call that repentance. You submit your mindset. There are many stubborn wives in the world today who come with their ideologies. The family for instance may have just five thousand naira coming in a month and the woman can come and say mio i don't wear two thousand five hundred naira wrapper if if it's not this it's not that the husband is saying don't worry god is faithful he will help us so i mean i i don't i don't buy chicken that you know i don't do all of these things submit your mindset everybody says submit your mindset in the little time that i have counseling people one of the biggest issues i've seen in relationship is not that the marriage is not workable but both parties are not yet willing to bend and submit their mindsets everybody say mindset say mindset you must submit your mindset there are ladies who have all kinds of poisonous mindsets your concept of love is spend lavishly as unto death even if it's to borrow just borrow i want gifts every day if in two days he does not send recharge card this guy doesn't love me god forbid you delete his number what sort of life are you living that's a mindset that must come under scrutiny ah many of you are looking at me frowning you've not started you better look at me well because i will press this thing like an iron till it stays the brother is working hard trying to save a little you have started announcing your birthday in september from february this guy is already been under pressure what is this lady saying now in essence i want to come for koinonia and it's raining the guy is okay let me arrange a small bike for you just cut the phone bike don't look for a taxi to carry me what sort of life is that everybody says submit in everything this thing is many many ladies i will say it i love you too much because that mindset is what has pushed many of us it's a mindset we have suffered a lot of things and you believe that the man is a scapegoat that will make you feel happy what they didn't give you at home in your own father's house you want to yoke the man now to give you by force they give you five thousand naira pocket money the guy is giving you forty thousand. It's not enough. You know my needs are increasing. Ah. The guy just calculates and says, "Ah, this relationship is just six months. My back is already paining me. What sort of thing is this?" Don't let society make you feel this is the pattern. I'm teaching you the way of the kingdom. Listen. If you are ashamed of being desperate about your relationship 
and putting your hands on deck to walk it together you can as well pack up from now there are many ladies who do not want to show any sign of passion and desperation in their relationship they call it being cheap so when it's time to put their hands they feel embarrassed by it let the guy not think i'm too cheap it's the same thing that happens so when there's anything he says in fact you know that joseph guy you started calling again oh you are now threatening the guy the guy now goes to say please sam borrow me five thousand say to i got this little one say to although it's not enough oh, but to, honestly and joseph wanted to give me fifteen thousand oh I'm, I'm not don't feel bad i'm just saying it to let you see how much i'm committed in this relationship what sort of threat is that somebody is being delivered this night in the name of jesus a woman of honor and dignity is a woman that defends the interests of the man a man can meet you with hundred thousand and you will say i've made up my mind i will drink gary with this one we have 200 naira how much do you have 50 naira buy sugar with your own let me buy gary and we'll sit down and while you take it together you tell her i may not be able to show you anything now but i assure you as surely as the god of heaven lives with this word and these principles you will smile one day and the lady says thank god i know things will change in the future but it's not because i'm trusting for future even if it does not change it's a decision by revelation sister the greatest thing you can do to a man in your life is to let him know make him feel secure the way he is not complacent but let him know that is not what is giving you that you love him with passion and you can come and tell him somebody offered me to eat in the restaurant but i came help him soak the gary put the cold water there and say lord we thank you because you are changing our lives when i said i loved you i meant it i know you're a man of destiny you are going somewhere it may not look like it please don't be under any pressure i know that i had to help you with 500 naira but i love you and i honor you you have given that man energy to arise and run many ladies are killing their relationships with wrong mindsets then when another lady starts doing to the man what you have refused to do the guy leaves you with your expensive life and your life of no gratitude you feel is an embarrassment he bought with one for you you laughed and said oh god there are two types this type is fake you self now what for you this guy for the first time went to the market strolled around like a fool in the market looking for with one got what yes it was fake but didn't he try and he brought it and you now put it and say to well let me tell the truth i'm not going to put it to i'm telling you straight but to may god help you you are not doing bad look at because he asks you out all of a sudden that brother will leave you and come for fellowship like this and then the first thing is he sees a sister who says good evening ah, the brother has never gotten that kind of thing from you and the lady looks and there's water and says sorry wait don't sit yet and she cleans the chair the brother says in jesus name oh lord i came for con listen listen i'm being sincere with you tonight hallelujah at the end of the meeting the lady is using please i'm sorry thank you remember all those words and after everything this brother goes to the room and he's fighting thoughts oh lord why can i not have this lady behave like this then the sister sends a text may the lord uphold you and make you a mighty man let your seed be mighty upon the earth immediately is receiving it madam now sends her own Ogalfa, it's 11 o'clock you have not called and it's contrasting and this guy is saying kai oh god i'm already getting to a point where i need to come to terms with myself brothers am i speaking please sisters this is what you are causing a lot of brothers without knowing the brother has 500 naira you go to buy suya 
you know he has 500 naira you just carry five say put the edge on top cut it whereas this brother was saving 100 naira maybe to take pap and yam later on you are causing pain to this guy then he goes to meet another lady who says look 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 i know you confided in me and you let me know things are not going on well this recharge card you sent i know you tried but i know that you are you are paying the price it's too much look i am i'm very comfortable god bless you before you know it should i tell you what will happen when you finish quarreling that guy he will call the lady who is behaving virtuous when he starts reporting you you're already in trouble red card is already ticking once he starts reporting you to the virtuous lady something is already going wrong and then the lady worsens the situation she says well let's pray for this other one ah added virtue added virtue sisters i'm sharing with you sincere secrets submit your mindset submit your mindset there's no time maybe another time we'll take on the men men you know i always balance equations hallelujah it's very important could it be that there is a sister sitting down here on her way to destroying her marriage because there is no submission you shout at the man any day any time blast him and say after all you are not even among the five people that came close to me if not because of all this christian christian thing what will make me come and talk to you and the brother leaves heartbroken and the brother is now thinking multiply this experience times 20 years multiply it times 30 years multi this one i've not become rich this girl is already killing me the day she becomes madame Nko, that means you enter any of the jeeps when they buy the new jeep and they say leave it let's dedicate you say that's the one i must drive look sisters when you see this lost this bossy domineering attitude is the hand of satan on his way to destroy your relationship are you hearing what i'm saying we are going to pray you must submit if you are not interested in submission don't get married don't get into a relationship there is a beautiful position men honor those below them they respect and they cherish those above them they fight those who claim equality with them when you maintain this beautiful position it's not making you weak ladies learn to speak to your man learn to honor him send him text messages of dignity listen many of you don't know what it means to be a man is 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 bigger than bringing children into the world the responsibility when all of you pray for the rent you say in jesus name i saw a vision rent is coming you go to bed it's left for the man to translate that vision into reality We hardly remember Father's Day. We remember Mother's Day. When it's Father's Day, we forget the fathers. These are the men that labor. Let me tell you, you don't know what it means to be a man. You're sitting down, there are school fees. There are all kinds of things. Please, ladies, respect men. Respect these brothers, you see. They may be foolish, but respect them. They may sound naive. God knows why he put them in that position. When you maintain that posture, you're on your way to entering a godly relationship. It cannot always be your way. Write it. There are many ladies, if it's not your way to hell with it, change tonight. Change tonight. If Taiwo says we should go this way, and I say we should go this way, both of us must be able to submit to the word of God. If the word of God says two of you come this way, we should not be embarrassed to tilt and bend to this third witness the most authority above us is someone learning something tonight this is how to become a woman of virtue i submit to you 
many of the ladies in our generation are not virtuous ladies please don't feel offended i honestly submit to you under god and without any bias the average lady including in the church they are not virtuous they are godly but they are not virtuous this is why it looks like marriage is very difficult no man wants a liability in his life sisters and you you better listen to what i'm saying could it be the reason why some of us have not had a husband or somebody come into your life you are rude at everybody you can't greet anybody whenever you want to you say please let people not think i'm doing notice me i'm being desperate please me too i have dignity dr mrs becky and is one woman that i have come to model there are two women that mentor me as far as the character of family and how a woman should be at in the house one is dr mrs becky and the other one is reverend mrs funke felix adejumo these two women have demonstrated to me the most authentic revelation of womanhood and it has helped me to submit to christ you see why many believers do not have authentic power they have not submitted to christ in everything they believe in god but they have not submitted you have not submitted your finances you've not submitted your body god tells you to go on a three-day fast lord i want my comfort you already died to set me free why do i need to die again there is no submission are you seeing how it relates to christ and the church like a faithful bride that's why most of the songs that i write i write songs that connote my submission i sing songs that connote his authority it's not because i know i don't know that i am one with him when you come into the kingdom you will drop down as a woman that means every man who truly works with god should be able to understand a woman because that is really what he is in the spirit too like women there are times we are stubborn and we have all kinds of mood swings but like a loving husband god understands there are times we even yell at him just like a lady will yell at the guy she's going out with other husband even call him stupid but God looks at our heart, not our actions. And while you are insulting him and saying, God, I'm disappointed. You let this happen to me. God just keeps quiet. Men, learn this. When God is silent, he's about to speak. When you're a man who talks too much, you are not strong. Great men are men of few words. Let the woman be ranting. When she finishes, you calm down. That's a man talking. You too, you join, you start talking, then you start crying too two brides you must sustain strength and stability hallelujah they are coming to drive you out of the house there's no rent the woman has cried and done everything even gets angry and say i told you to get that job you didn't get that job and the man keeps quiet and later he now calls her and when he's calling her she's afraid because she's thinking he's going to give her a dirty slap or something and the man says look i understand i know what you're going through and i'm sorry and she's flattered and embarrassed and her perception about the man is changing is this not what jesus christ does to you after we do all the nonsense that we do we run to him and when we run to him like the prodigal son he doesn't stand us out and say go back go back he says come hallelujah husbands you must love your wife unto death you must sacrifice unto death jesus modeled that and showed it to us he is always responsible wives you must honor your husband i didn't say that let me add it husbands when a woman submits to you you must show forth a level of responsibility that justifies that submission are you getting my point 
when you keep starving a woman every day and say that's how nigeria is she gets up to go and look for something and the man and please don't get me wrong but i need to talk to some of us who are from the north because it's generally believed that the north and the middle belters have, have, have shown quite a strong level of irresponsibility we get married to a lady pay the dowry and throw her away and we say we need three more children in this household and the woman is saying for who to feed you see a woman going to the farm we we went for a meeting in a particular place i will mention in nigeria and i saw women riding bicycles they are the ones carrying firewood and doing everything and i saw the men they just sat down with their pot bellies just taking beer and gisting around their neighborhood i said what cross irresponsibility of the highest order listen let me tell you brothers and sisters you may not get a job now but are you reading books you may not get a job now can't you get up and make yourself productive stop taking the lady for granted yes she has humbled herself and you are drinking gary together but do you want to keep drinking gary forever don't stretch her generosity ladies shout and tell the guys wake up say it wake up wake up wake up many of us are not doing anything there is none of us here who is young young enough to begin to plan your life what books are you reading what are you doing about your finances have you read any book on fatherhood we are going to round up all the brothers stand up lift your right hand and let's trust God for grace we must correct what is happening in the family don't feel embarrassed about it I preach like this I don't shout out of annoyance it's out of passion say after me in the name of Jesus I receive grace to be a responsible husband to be a responsible father to be a responsible leader I receive grace to pay the price now and build my spiritual life and build my leadership life and build my family life and build my financial life my wife will call me blessed my children will call me blessed my generation will call me blessed my home will be a model home may god bless you and may he make this confession become true in your life in the future don't forget that you stood before god's people and lifted your hands when it's 10 years down the line when young men become draculas in their house remember you made a commitment now i will preach it while i have access to you all the men that are killing their wives many of us here over 70 percent we grew under hostile homes our fathers were draculas they practically abused us it took the grace of god for god to navigate the way you cannot park in the same parking lot your parents parked and expect a different result you must take a decision now and that decision is not by faith you will begin to walk at it no more joking around you are in a relationship you cannot be doing calls from morning to night let there be a time you are reading book go on youtube study on establishment study on godly parenting there's no time where our time is already spent I'll, maybe i'll touch a bit next week before we go into another topic please make that make that commitment i listened to a message some weeks ago maybe about two weeks by dr miles munro on fatherhood when i listened to that message i got down on my knees and i cried i said lord even at this point i am not satisfied i want to be an award-winning husband i want to be an award-winning father i want my children not to run away when they hear the horn of my car i want them to stand outside rejoicing that when my children don't see me for six hours they miss me many of you have not been home in years and you are not missing anybody because of the pain you have gone through 
you were busy insulting your father now in a few weeks or few months or few years it will now be your turn you're already emulating the mindset that you've lived under that's why god brought you to koinonia to change you jesus is a responsible person as that husband he gives you breath he grants you favor he forgives he understands that you are weak like the woman who is called a weaker vessel he knows that your frame is human and that there are some things you cannot take you must begin to show compassion brothers show compassion to these sisters many of you are bullies you bully every lady around you many of you are in relationships and your relationship has all kinds of tension nobody can talk to you you don't listen to anybody's opinion you do it as you please you want the lady to come to your place where are you come now come now i don't want to hear anything you better change better change i show you a great mystery i show you a great mystery god has never failed in his responsibility as a faithful husband god has been faithful to an extent that after his finished work he still sat down at the right hand making intercession for the saints how many of you have given excuses for your wives how many have given have given excuses for the lady you stand with the lady you are going out with tearing her into pieces in the presence of other ladies and so she lacks the dignity can i tell you something brothers you the lady your wife is a reflection of the honor you are put on her are you hearing what i'm saying your wife just like the church is the reflection of the honor that christ has put upon us he has made us head over principalities and powers he gave us dominion you must bring your wife to be a partaker of your honor and dominion You see certain men, millionaires, great men, and you now see their wives, wretched, trekking around, whereas they have four cars at home. I show you a mystery. Never do to any woman what Jesus Christ did not do to you. Write it, brothers. Never do to any woman what Jesus Christ didn't do to you. It's wrong, it's ungodly. please sit down ladies please stand up we're going to pray all ladies our sisters please kindly stand up this is a very prophetic commitment married or not married please stand up lift your hands say after me in the name of Jesus I receive grace to be a woman of excellence to be a woman of virtue to be a woman desperate to make my marriage work say it to be a woman that represents godliness to be a woman that reflects the image of the perfect church i receive grace to be submissive i receive grace to be temperate i receive grace to be modest i receive grace to be virtuous i receive grace for self-control i receive grace to love my husband to submit to him my children will call me blessed there's no fear in my home there's no tension in my home i embrace the mindset of the kingdom and I refuse any mindset that makes me short of being the perfect bride may the Lord bless you see let me tell you in the years to come when we celebrate godly children when we celebrate the grace of God we will meet again in future and many of you will thank me for this because your home will be a tension free zone I vowed from a very young age
that some of the things I suffered growing up, my children will never ever have to go through it. It's a pledge before the God whom I serve. Brothers, don't carry any man's daughter to your house and jeopardize the remaining part of her life. It's better to remain single. God will honor you for it. Especially those of us in ministry. If you are getting into ministry, listen very well. Because ministers have a lot of tendencies. Everyone rise up on your feet. In one minute before we pray. Hallelujah. Just play it softly. Please, I want everybody to think for one minute. Have your relationship with Jesus Christ been like that of a faithful bride and her husband? So all of us are brides now. I want you to reflect in one minute. Is the mystery of marriage at work in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Can you truly say you have been a faithful bride? Submitting to him in all things. Not just believing in him. Many of us have submitted our finances but not our bodies. We are still playing harlotry with God. Many of us, I wish I had time, I would have taught on the faithful bride. There's still a, another part of the teaching, in fact a major part. Because I wanted to talk about spiritual fornication. The concept. How that marriage, I, I needed us to understand the purpose of marriage. How that the purpose of marriage brings about oneness and marriage from the bible is an antidote to a life of fornication just like commitment to god is the antidote to going around and mixing spirituality with witchcraft and mixing it becoming a faithful bride that submits god will grant us grace but i want you to think your relationship with jesus christ there are many of us you cannot say you have been faithful imagine yourself as a woman right now have you been faithful to this husband that has never failed imagine a man in your life who cannot fail imagine a man in your life who loves you more than your wildest imagination that in spite of our harlotry he has been faithful please listen we're about to pray now i want you to imagine everybody for one minute what kind of home do you see yourself building? Especially our brothers. I want you to imagine right now. What do you see your children calling you in the next 10 years? A disaster in their life or a gift? What do you see happening? Sisters, what do you see your husband calling you after 5 years? Can he look at you and say, even if I missed out on the will of God, I know I did not i never made a mistake will a brother look at you after 10 years and be crying every day and said i missed it oh god i missed it there's one of my friends quite an elderly friend of mine every time he talks to me about marriage he tells me something he said i missed it in my marriage make sure you do not miss it this man loves the lord with all his heart I'm telling you I have never seen I thought I was a giver till I met that man that man dwarfed my giving life by a factor that got me scared and I said how could such a nice man make a mistake in his marriage see if you need to go for a retreat over your relationship let me even talk to you if you are in a relation if you are married well that's all right but if you are in a relationship that you know is not going anywhere, don't feel embarrassed and say, people have already seen me with the guy. What do I tell people? If there is need to go for a retreat, let me tell you right now. The sign are the periodic checks that come to your heart here and again. Those things are the voice of God calling you to go and flog things out. There's no perfect relationship, but there are godly relationships. Go back to God and flog it out with destiny. So that if in case it was because of the guy's money or your perception of his anointing, that's what drove you. 
you better find a solid reason right now that can last for eternity and there are many of us here sisters god is speaking to you godly men come and keep asking you out you know the food that they are receiving the spiritual nourishment i'm not talking about careless people who parade in a crowd like this as as believers a godly man comes to your life you keep posting and pushing everybody instead of going home to pray build compatibility and settle down maritally you keep pushing everybody around only to find out that life is like a graph there is a peak period of your life there is a level you get to where all the men who would have married you are already married at that point you don't have options again and there are some of us brothers you keep parading ladies around you believing that you are a fine guy you are a charismatic guy because of your anointing there are all kinds of ladies parading around you you have promised all of them that you are thinking about it and you are feeling hot the bible says do not be deceived god cannot be mocked you have stopped those sisters they have said no to every brother waiting for you because you gave them assurance that you are coming it's time to think about your life this night think about your life this night do not make commitment to any man's daughter that you do not plan to go far with hallelujah now lift your voice and ask for grace first to be a faithful bride this is the secret of spiritual power we are out of time but i want you to pray please pray this is a most important commitment no matter what it is that you want to do just give yourself some time and pray lord i receive grace to be a faithful bride i submit to you i submit my body i submit my body i submit my mortal physical body it will not be used as an instrument of fornication it will not be used as an instrument of spiritual halotry i submit thou husband faithful husband of my life like a faithful bride i minister to your needs the bible says her desire shall be to her husband my desire is only to my king my desire is only to my lord my desire is only the one who paid the dowry to make me a bride i cannot look at any other god again i am fulfilled i am satisfied there may be many gods working magic but i am committed to be a faithful bride when things go well and when things don't go well i have pled my allegiance like a faithful bride i submit to you when ministry goes well i still submit to you when you give me prosperity i submit to you make a decision it's not enough to believe in god when you come to the kingdom you submit hallelujah now you are going to pray you are still praying as the bride you're going to say lord tonight i submit my mentality i submit my mentality lift your voice and pray you are not just a husband that is there to meet my needs you also have needs i'm sorry for embracing a mindset that only thinks about myself my money my marriage my exams my academics my ministry many of us have been unfaithful bride we forget that god as a husband also has a need a need to be honored a need to be believed a need to be trusted a need to be represented hallelujah make up your mind tonight to truly submit to god in everything one last prayer point we're going to pray right now you're going to say lord 
my marriage will not fail because of me i won't be the reason why my relationship will fail guys keep coming into my life and everybody is complaining the problem is not the man the problem is me help me oh god pray guys you have entered 12 relationships none is working i assure you the problem is not the guy the problem is you pray I receive grace to play my role. Sisters, pray. I don't see submission as an embarrassment again. I submit my mindset. I submit my ideologies. I serve the man. He enjoys my presence. My desire is unto him. I put my hand on the plow. I'm determined to make my relationship work. Hallelujah. Father, we trust you for marriages in this place that only reflect Christ and his church. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy to every dying marriage may the hand of the Lord come upon you every family facing any kind of marital tension I stretch my hands and I pray that the mercy of God comes into that in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah please let me recommend two books very quickly hallelujah please every lady should read this before she gets married I I, I I forgotten I think 15 plus one uh, 15 plus one secret of a successful marriage I think something like that dr. mrs. Becky and Enche, please I kneel down and I beg you go and get it get it if Oga Jordan is here, call Oga Jordan. Tell him to branch Abuja as he comes back from Lagos and buy it. Brothers, read the principle of fatherhood by Miles Munro. The principle of fatherhood. By next week, media, I will download a very important video. Please, next week, all the brothers, you can collect it. There's a video on fatherhood. Very serious video. I think it's about one hour, 30 minutes. We'll download it and you'll be free. Just come with a flash drive, we'll give you. You can sit down with your friends and listen to it. Hallelujah. You're worshiping with us for the first time. Please rise up on your feet and come out very quickly. God bless you. We love you. Please, very quickly, very quickly. Thank you for coming. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. This is home for you. God bless you. Celebrate them as they come inside and outside. We have a prayer and a blessing for you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Keep coming. Those of you worshiping with us for the first time, we love you. We honor you. Thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia. Bless you for coming. You will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands, saints of God, as we pray for them. Prophesy blessings upon them. Your life will reflect this spiritual marriage of faithfulness and submission. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we declare that you are blessed. You are blessed in your going out. You are blessed in your, and you're coming in. All that you do is blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. We bless you with the blessings of the heavens and with the blessings of the house. You are always not here but... Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist 
by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you